Today's video, I want to talk about how you can best answer the interview question, tell me about a time you had to persuade someone. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first thing you need to understand is why they're asking this question and it's quite simple. They want to get an understanding of how you convince others, how you influence people, how you create alignment, how you communicate, and basically it's all the important people skills that generate trust, that generate camaraderie, that generate solidarity in the workplace. So they basically want to make sure you know how to work with other people because at the end of the day, we need to convince people all the time. And no matter where you stand in the hierarchy in the workplace, there is always some type of influencing or persuasion that you are doing. Whether you are asking for days off or whether you're asking for a project or whether you're asking for different responsibilities, these are all things that you need to work on persuading others. So definitely it's a very important part of working. So what hiring managers are looking for in this interview question is your ability to convince people either via emotion or logic or a combination of both or with evidence. Like there's a bunch of things that you can use to convince people or to persuade people and they want to see how you approach it so that they can get a gauge of how you work with others. Another thing that they want to understand is how you tailor your communication depending on the audience. So sometimes you're trying to persuade your boss, sometimes you're trying to persuade your direct reports, or people on another team, or people in your own team. There's a bunch of people that you could be working on persuading, and they want to get an understanding of how you do it and how you adjust accordingly. And finally, they also want to understand how do you deal with pushback, objection, rejection, and so on. So that being said, the second point in this video is to find the right example because the right example needs to cover all these bases. So the first thing about finding the right example is finding something that's relevant to the role at hand. So if you're applying for a designer role, you want to make sure that you involve the typical things that a designer would be dealing with, such as dealing with stakeholders, such as working of resources or convincing people for more resources, working of budgets, timelines, and so on. So whatever you're dealing with, you want to find the closest example possible. And the second thing you want to do is when you pick the example, you want to structure it so that it's not only talking about the result. They're more interested about how you did it in this question. So you also want to structure it so that I organize my persuasion tactics using these steps. Right? So you have to draw the steps for them. And the best way to do this is to take a star formula, which is basically situation, task, action, and result. And by working on that, you can better answer this question. I have made a video about this. I'll put it in the cards above. So definitely check it out if you're not familiar with what the star method is. Now, the third thing you need to do is to highlight the right qualities. And the very first quality that you want to highlight is your communication skills. You want to be able to demonstrate that you are able to communicate effectively in a persuasive manner. And there are many different modes of communication. There's email, there's in-person, there's in informal meetings, there's informal meetings. It could be in a Slack message or a Teams message, whatever you're using. But at the end of the day, you want to show how you are communicating consistently in a persuasive manner to get someone on your side, right? To create this alignment. The second thing you need to do is to demonstrate empathy. You want to find an example where not only are you imposing your perspective on someone because that's never a good feeling to always like saying like, oh yeah, I kept on imposing them and pushing them and eventually they did what I want. Like they don't want that example. That's not a good example. Like being naggy, uh, forcing people from top down, like ordering it, commanding it. Those are generally not very good ways of persuasion. What you want to find an example of is empathy where you understand what the other person is going through and you're working with their parameters as well so that you find a result that is satisfactory for everyone, right? Whether it's compromising a little bit on your end or having them compromise a little bit, like just finding a middle ground where it's everyone winning. And so you wanna find an example where you demonstrate this empathy. Ideally, you know, you want them to be willing to work with what you want, but if it means a little bit of compromise on your end, that is totally fine as well. The third element you really want to highlight are the problem solving skills. So not only dealing with people emotionally, but also dealing with it in a very pragmatic sense. How do you solve the issue? What was the root cause of the issue? And how did you eventually get the evidence to persuade people 
to side with you and create this alignment. So not only is it about emotional alignment, but it's also the pragmatics and the logistics of just executing and getting things done. The fourth and final thing is showing that adaptability. Like I mentioned earlier, the ability to compromise and empathize and all that, that's important. Adaptability is the main thing that you want to show, whether it's working around other people's timelines or their parameters, their limitations, that is very important as well. Now, the fourth thing you need to understand is you got to avoid some common mistakes while answering this question. The first common mistake is to not show this empathy. The second mistake that people tend to make is being too results oriented and like this is what happened as a result. No, people want to understand how you did it. So you really have to highlight the process of how you create alignment via persuasion. And the third mistake that people make is coming across as manipulative, top down, uh, autocratic. These are generally just not good examples to use. So you want to steer clear of it. And the fifth and final thing is to practice, practice, practice by having a good structure with the star method, by having a good example, you still need to practice by articulating it, whether via recording or by speaking of other people you need to practice because at the end of the day, how smooth you articulate this and how clearly you say this can really go a long ways in making the story being authentic and persuasive. Speaking of a, you know, a persuasion question in the interview. And that's it. That's how you answer this question. Hope it was helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like, share, subscribe, follow wherever you are. If you have any thoughts about what I said, let me know in the comments below. Always happy to engage and hope you have a good one. Take care.